This is one of the best people to check out if you want to develop pretty much everything you need to learn when starting out with jazz. Phrasing, vocabulary, rhythm, and most importantly, these solos are pretty easy to figure out and play. I've given them to students to learn by ear many times and they always learn a ton from it. Which makes me almost want to submit a complaint with my former teachers because... Okay, Mr. Essay. Nobody told me to check him out, but I'll get back to that later. Prepare! The guitarist I'm talking about here is of course Grant Green, someone who was a massive influence on a lot of people. From Benson to Pat Metheny, Peter Bernstein to Kurt Rosenwinkel, super important guitar player in jazz guitar history. To me, there are sort of three periods for Grant Green's playing. His early bebop, hardbop period, which is what I'll focus on in this video, a lot of organ trio stuff, and also the guitar trio album simply called Standards. Then there's a true hard pop era with more modal jazz and albums with Coltrane's rhythm section. I think Solid is an amazing album from this period. And finally, the funk and soul period where you have Green is Beautiful. But the stuff that's so incredibly valuable for beginners learning jazz is mostly the early stuff, and I think you will see why. And just to warn you, I will also talk about why I don't like his tone that much on these albums. But you can of course start complaining about that already now in the comments. Let's get to the first example, which is the pickup and the beginning of the solo, and it demonstrates three things that you definitely want to have in your playing. Actually, probably demonstrates more than that. I should probably mention that the song is You Stepped Out of a Dream of the album called Standards. The whole album is a guitar trio and Green doesn't play any chords in this song at all. Same goes for a few of the other songs on the album. It is a great example of how you can use trills in your playing to change up the flow a bit and make the whole thing come more alive so it isn't just eighth notes all the time. The first four bars of the solo shows some really useful examples of motivic development with three phrases that are linked using motifs. First, two phrases on the C major 7 that are both descending arpeggio melodies. And then he connects the second phrase of C major 7 with the phrase on the D flat major 7 by using the same beginning notes over the chord. Another thing that you want to notice is the large interval skip that Grant Green uses over the D-flat major 7, inserting a low F between D-flat and C. This is instant bebop, and you will see three more variations of this later in the solo. And if that's all you learn from this solo, it's still worth the effort. Victory! The 2 5 one to a flat major that follows is also a great line, but later you'll also see the perfect 2 5 one line. This one have what you might call a D-flat major 7 9 arpeggio, Something you'll see him play in a few different variations as well in the solo. On the E-flat 7, there's another great interval skip that I usually associate with uh, Wes Montgomery. You encircle the third of the dominant and then skip up to the root. Wes does this a few times in 4 and 6 as well. Let's take a look at that perfect 251. Grand Green is a great example of how to be practical about taking Charlie Parker bebop licks that are often very difficult, almost impossible to play on the guitar, and then make them into really playable and very solid bebop vocabulary for guitar. This, coupled with how he usually plays fairly relaxed tempos, make these solos a lot easier to play and learn, and they're still great music. Check out this line, and then I'll talk about how it is the perfect example of a 251 Bebop Lake. You can hear that this example has it all. Syncopation, trills, interval skips and triplets. The funny thing about this is that you can actually see it as an embellishment of a very simple skeleton like this. First you get the syncopation and the enclosure from D to B flat. So. This is followed with the second way to introduce an interval skip, which is the pivot arpeggio that takes you to the G on the C7. We still have two variations of these in the solo, so stay tuned. From here, he then adds a trill and an enclosure to resolve to the third of F, A. One thing that you want to notice is that at the very beginning of this line, when he has the enclosure taking us to the B flat, 
then he's actually playing the enclosure in the opposite direction. So the melody moves down from D to B flat, and then he plays the enclosure going up from A to C. Again, this is a much more interesting melody, also without the syncopation. If everything moved down, it sounds like this, compared to the flipped enclosure. This is also a thing that Parker does really a lot, so he probably got it from there. We still have those two variations of the interval skips, so let's move to the next example. There is a really cool trick with enclosures at the end of this example, but let's start with the phrase on the D-flat major 7, where he's really laying back in time. Again, he's adding a low F between D-flat and C, but this time he's adding a leading note to that lower note, which is a great way to amplify the effect of that interval skip. On the 2-5 in A-flat that follows, you have another example of that D-flat major 7 with a 9 arpeggio that I already talked about earlier, but now he's adding a trill and going into two enclosures next to each other that sound really great. And here you have a melody which is first an enclosure of B-flat, and then one of G. This is very similar to how George Benson creates some great lines on Billy's Bounce. No scales, just triads and enclosures. Let me know if you want a link to the video where I talk about that. As I mentioned in the beginning, then I was actually never told to check out Grand Green, which is probably just a coincidence. I had actually checked out some of his later stuff before getting into jazz, but I didn't really think about that you could also look for stuff that he does that's more like standard material. It wasn't really until I started looking for material that I could use for teaching that I discovered him, mainly because his solos are not too long, they're not too fast, and they're often on a 12-bar blues or a very common jazz standard, which makes them really great for learning Yes. This led me to check out quite a few solos and also using them really a lot in lessons. And I really like a lot of his albums, especially Solid is a favorite of mine, where Joe Henderson is also really amazing. Grand Green clearly doesn't fit in the typical myth about jazz tone with the tone rolled down and bass turned up on the amp, but of course that is also a myth. If you've watched any of my other videos on my guitars and how I think about tone, then you might be able to guess that I'm not a massive fan of how Grand Green sounds on these early recordings, where I think he's using an ES-330, which is a completely hollow version of a 335 with P90 pickups. According to George Benson, then Grand Green set up his amp by turning down treble and bass and turning up the mids, which actually is not that different from how I set up my amp. When I talk about not liking the attack on my ES-175 in the video on that guitar, that is exactly what you hear in this recording of Grand Green. And remember that it's quite possible to like how somebody plays without wanting to have to sound like them. And for the rest, feel free to open up emotionally in the comment section. I also want to add a short side note on the harmony Grant Green uses in this song and how he doesn't use any chords, which is really not very common for jazz guitar trios. But I think it's really clever how Grant Green uses fills to spell out the harmony next to the melody. This is especially clear on the major seven chords in the beginning where you have the third in the melody, and then Grant Green plays a riff spelling out movement from seventh to the sixth, which gives both the chord and also suggests some harmonic movement. He probably got that from the trombone part on the Sonny Rollins version. And I say that because he also plays the same reharmonization and also plays the same wrong note in the melody that Sonny plays. The next example is on top of that reharmonization. The reharmonization here is that you usually don't go from F major 7 to F minor 7, B flat 7, but instead it goes from F major 7 to A minor 7, D7, so 5 or 5. Both set of changes actually fit the melody because that's just a C. What I want to highlight here is the fourth variation of those bebop interval skips, because here you have an A flat major 7 pivot arpeggio on top of the F minor 7. <laughs> But Grand Green adds two nice variations to it. You get a leading note to the low C, so... And then when he gets up to the G again, he adds a trill there. The other thing that I want to point out here is how he also uses the enclosure and interval skip on the B flat 7. So you get that 
really nice interval skip, which is similar to what he did on the E-flat 7 in the very first example. Learning solos by ear is a great way to develop your phrasing and getting the right type of melodies into your ears and out into your playing. But it can be difficult to find solos that work for beginners that are easy to check out. To help with that, then check out this video where I discuss some different examples of easy solos that you can learn by ear. They are from different guitar players, but one of them is Grant Green, and it's not the one that I talked about in this video, because in this one, it's a jazz blues.